Hello and welcome to the fastest money method in Grand Turismo 7 post update 1.31. Now I've said this less than a week ago and we've already made the tune a whole lot faster. If you follow my method correctly you will earn over 2 million credits in just an hour of gameplay. So if you're interested in that and want to see more content like this hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out. So the car that you're going to need for this method is the Suzuki V6 Escuro Pikes Peak. If you don't already have this car, you need to pick it up because this car is essential and one of the most overpowered vehicles in Gran Turismo 7. On screen now are the parts that you need to purchase from the tuning shop. All of these parts are available and all of the other parts involved with this tune already come applied when you purchase the vehicle. On screen now is the tune that you need to actually get this glitch done. I'm going to go through it slowly so you don't miss out or make any possible mistakes. This is a brand new tuning sheet and this is what you're gonna have when you pick the vehicle up stock. So right now I'm going to go through it slowly so you don't miss out on anything and you can get this glitch done correctly first time. So first thing you're going to need to do is your tire compound is going to be set to comfort hard. Now this is the only tire compound that we are going to be using during this event so it's the only one you have to worry about. Now when it comes to suspension, the differential as well as the torque vectoring differential this does not affect the car's performance points. So you can actually tailor this to make it your experience and how you can handle the Suzuki best. So if you just want to copy down my settings, they are as follows. For body height adjustments in the rear, we're going to set this to 95. For body height adjustments in the front, we're going to set it to 75 as low as possible. In the front, we're going to set the anti-roll bar to 4 and we're going to leave the rear at 5. Now, we're going to leave the dampening ratio, expansion and compression as well as natural frequency alone. We're going to change the negative camber angle to 1.0 in both the front and the rear. Toe angle we're not going to touch, differential not going to touch. We're just going to set the torque vector and differential to 13 in the front, 17 in the rear. Now, as I mentioned, these settings, the suspension, differential, and torque vector and differential do not affect your performance points rating. However, what does is if you have a car with a created livery, head on over to GT Auto and make sure your wheel settings are set to standard. You do not want the offset to be wide because this will actually affect your performance points rating. If we head on over to transmission, we're going to set it to a fully customizable racing transmission. We're going to set it to 360 and leave it. We aren't going to touch the manual adjustments. When it comes to downforce, your rear is going to be set at 700. And your front downforce is going to be set at 248. Now, with those settings, if you hit the triangle to measure how much your performance is at, we had 627.20. But if we add a high RPM turbocharger, it drops us down to 598. Now you do actually have some leeway when it comes to your front downforce. You can set it between 242 and 248. In between there you will be in the glitched area. If you go above 248 you will be out of the glitch area and will be over 600 performance points. If you go below 242 the car will be out of the glitch area once again and you will have a build of higher than 600 performance points. Once again now on screen is the full setup of what you need and how you should set your car. Now that we have the tune done, let's head on over to the event. So we're going to head on over to Tokyo Expressway, the WTC 600, which is going to give us 825,000 credits. Once we complete the event and collect our clean race bonus. Now these are the ways that you could possibly use your clean race bonus and you need to avoid these things. The first thing, hitting cars. Avoid hitting cars at all costs. If you slightly bump into them, it's fine. You won't lose your clean race bonus. Just don't use them to slow your car down. Number two, colliding with the walls. We are going to be wall riding. As long as you don't go body slamming your car into the barrier, you should be good. Number three, 
when you're coming up to the final hairpin, as long as you break in time and do not let the car run wide and connect the cones that are on the outer parts of the circuit, you are going to be all good. And number four, do not cut that same final hairpin. Do not cross over the inner white line of the corner because that will count as you corner cutting and you lose your clean race bonus. Now with this out of the way, let's focus on the race strategy. You want to make sure when you load in that your fuel map is set to fuel map level one. You are going to leave it there for the entirety of the race. Also something I like to do is set my traction control level to level 3 because this will just aid and help the car actually grip up when the circuit is still wet. Now all you have to do is make it to the front of the pack. Now I was driving using an automatic transmission so there was no short shifting involved and I still had 0.6% of fuel remaining while on the straightway heading towards the pit lane. So you're gonna come in for your first and only pit stop at the end of lap 6. Now, in that pit stop you're gonna change for a new fresh set of tyres and you're gonna let your car refuel. Now, the choice is up to you because it doesn't really make that big of a difference. You can either fuel the car all the way up to 100% or you can fill it up to 97%. As I said, there's no real difference. This may save you like a second and a half. So now once your pit stop is over, you're gonna head out back onto circuit and just finish up the event. Now you should come to the end of the race with about 5% of fuel remaining. Now I was able to set an average lap time of about 1 minute 52 seconds and that brought me to a total of 23 minutes and 12 seconds to complete this event with my fastest lap being a mid 1 minute 50 time and I'm gonna show you now that same fastest lap now we start the lap doing over 340 kilometers per hour 339 to be exact when we cross over the start finish line now you can see we are flying towards the first corner doing over 340 kilometers per hour now, when you come up to the first corner, you want to go onto your far left. You are going to just let the car ride along the wall, then move a little bit off the wall, and for the second turn, let it ride against the wall again. Now, if there is AI in front of you, do try to avoid it. Now, for the next corner, you actually want to let off before you reach the bridge. Now, you're going to just let the car coast around the corner, just feathering the accelerator because you want the car to still come far wide because it's going to lead us to come up close to the barrier. Then, you're going to want to slam on the brakes once you pass the 100 meter mark. Once again, you're going to try and come as close to the barrier as possible. Even if you're slightly connected, it's fine. Then, you want to run wide as possible. Don't really bang the wall, but you are going to ride this corner carry as much speed as possible because you're gonna ride the following wall as well now you're gonna come off that wall full acceleration and guess what you're gonna ride this wall as well the car is gonna go into just flow to the other barrier and just let it happen now once you do that full speed towards the hairpin personally i like to slam on the brakes once i pass the first marker just knowing that okay this is a safe place to start braking because you're not gonna run too wide and i actually did run a bit too wide because i was a bit too late on the braking but anyway we make it around the corner foot flat and that is our lap done it's just a straight shot to the finish line and this is gonna complete our lap of one minute and 50 seconds around tokyo expressway and that ladies and gentlemen wraps up the fastest way to make money in Grand Turismo 7. If you did go on to enjoy this video and you want to see more content like this, hit that subscribe button, put post notifications on. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.